Okay, on to our next talk. In a letter to his brother, Vincent van Gogh said, it's a rather sad prospect to have to say to myself that the painting I do will perhaps never have any value. I think it's pretty safe to say that Vincent was wrong, right? I mean, the guy is an absolute international treasure and everybody knows his artwork. In fact, thousands of people flock every single year to the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam and it houses the world's largest collection of his artwork. It's the museum's key mission to make his art as accessible to as many people as possible. And today, we're joined by Sonica Prins, the Programme Manager Multimedia, and Senior Marketing Advisor, Lorene von der Veel, to explain how they're helping to make the museum's vision a reality. Please give it up for Sonica and Lorene. Hello, hello everyone. Hi, welcome to our talk. We're very excited to be here today. Thanks for Debt Festival. My name is Lorine, and uh, at the Van Gogh Museum, I address everything from audience segmentation to audience research, and also uh, the optimization of our visitor numbers. And visitors are also my primary focus uh, in my role as chair of the capacity team, because yes, we do have a capacity team. We'll talk about it a little bit more. And my name is Sonica Prins. I'm a program manager within the museum and I work on different projects that have to do with visitor experience as well. I have a little bit of a different focus also including uh, a more digital and technology um, uh, projects. And, um, and <laughs> we can start our presentation as well. Yeah. So this is our talk about fewer visitors and does that lead to more success? Here we are in... Can I get you this? Yes. Uh, well, you already heard our, our mission. Um, we try to uh, uh, make the life and work of Vincent van Gogh to reach as many pe people as possible. And we do that within the museum. Um, uh, and reach over 2.2 million visitors a year in 2018. And uh, it, we do that in the building in the Amsterdam Museum Square that has been established in 1973. Uh, we have the largest collection of artworks by Vincent van Gogh in the world. And we also have uh, over 700 of his letters that he wrote to family and friends, such as his brother Theo. We invite over 100 nationalities per year, and we have, a, for a museum, a very young audience. 50% is uh, under the age of 30. We also have a multimedia guide that is used by about one-third of, uh, of all our visitors at a price point of five euros per person, and um, that is for a paid a guide service, a very high uh, amount in the industry. On social media, we're doing very well as, as well. Uh, we have over almost 8 million followers on social media and are the number one in, with engagement in the museum field. Uh, MPS score, the net promoter scores for museums are generally very high, but for us it's um, uh, 60 through 63 percent, six, 63 last year, and um, we also have a very high reputation. The Erasmus did a research, um, and we were first in Europe and second in the world for all museums. So. What is it talk about? Where is our challenge? We have a very small building. It consists of a, a few parts. This is the first part. This was the original building established in 1973 uh, for a maximum of one million visitors per year. But as we said, we are now inviting over two million, so we had to extend. At first, we built the exhibition wing in 1999. And in 2015, we built 
uh, an, a glass entrance building in the middle and shift our entrance from the street side to the middle of the museum square. And what you see, the colors correspond with the previous picture. So you have the, the quite low uh, visitor numbers in purple with the original building. Bit higher when we opened up the exhibition wing, but nobody really expected the steep uh, climb we made from 2015 onwards when we had the opening of our new um, entrance building. But what you can also see is that in 2017 we had more visitors than last year, and we will also and that will also stay the same for this year. And for us, that is a success, because this is our problem if you compare it to the rest of the world or the rest of the a couple of big museums in the world. We are super small. We are the, well, maybe I'm standing in front of it, but the small <laughs> little square here, and the amount of uh, visitors that we invite is the huge lo uh, yellow block over here if you compare it to uh, square meters of visitors per year. So. So then the real problem. <laughs> uh, when the results came in from our continuous audience research in 2017, which was our record-breaking year, we had 2.3 million visitors. We never imagined that we could ever reach uh, numbers like this. Uh, but we also received this feedback from our audience. So, um, yeah, a huge surge in uh, negative feedback on the aspect of crowds and uh, bustle in the museum. Who has ever visited the Van Gogh Museum? Okay, so you kind of have an image of what the building looks like. That's good. <laughs> Did you find it very busy? Too busy? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it differs per person, uh, for sure. Um, but what we saw here was a definite, very clear indication we should work on this issue. Um, so this result actually started a quest, um, yeah, a whole journey that Sonic and I and some other colleagues have initiated to find the perfect balance between a wonderful visit experience and uh, optimizing the visitor numbers at the same time, because we do have this uh, mission statement that we want to reach as many people as possible with the art of Van Gogh, and we take it very seriously. <laughs> um, so what we did, we did we do? Uh, one of the first things was we had installed this Happy or Not terminal in 2016, and you usually see it at the, at the exit of, uh, of, of a, a toilet. Uh, did you, how do you rate the toilet? Um, but it, it was a very useful device for us. We were finally able to establish a very clear correlation. It's like a linear correlation between the amount of people that are in the museum and the happiness of our visitors. And contrary to what we expected, there was actually an optimum amount of visitors um, that people found most agreeable during their visits, and it was of being alone in the museum. Well, uh, that's not really feasible, so we have to find some balance in there. Um, what, what else did we do? Uh, we worked together with um, uh, data analysts. Uh, for example, they, make, they made these, uh, this is a predictive formula. It, makes, uh, it gives us information on how many visitors we will have the next day, the next week, the next month. Um, that gives a lot of more control to our situation. Uh, we team up with, um, with um, uh, people outside of the museum, such as universities. We work together. Well, we exchange notes with experts in the field, like the Anne Frank House uh, or Efteling theme park. Um, and also, our, our advice also goes to the, to the length of that we actually um, uh, continuously experiment with the in-house signing and wayfinding to make sure people are spread around the building as best as possible. And we also advise on uh, how the, the artworks are displayed. Uh, so, for example, uh, the Sunflowers has its own wall uh, on a newly built spot in the museum, in the main gallery, and that is actually um, uh, relates to... Um, it's actually... Well, how can I say this? Uh, we did some audience tracking research, and this was a result that we are now hanging, displaying the Sunflowers in a completely different way. Um, 
well, we have this huge capacity issue. Maybe uh, it's so obvious, <laughs> just open up the museum more hours of the day. And uh, unfortunately, that's not a possibility, because the artworks are really fragile, and they can only be allowed to, uh, to have a certain amount of lighting, lux. Uh, so the museum has to be closed and dark for a long time every day. Uh, so that's not an option. So we have some challenges that we have now laid out uh, for you. Uh, well, the first thing, of course, is the best news. There is uh, an enormous interest in the Van Gogh Museum and the artworks of Vincent. Um, so we're super happy about that. But also we are saying no to so many people every day. Um, and that bothers, bothers us, and we have established that there is this clear correlation between the crowds and the visitor experience, and we find visitor experience super important. So, um, yeah, what can we do, and what do we do to uh, change this, and how do we use uh, our research with that? Um, what you see here is a normal day in high season, a couple of years back. Uh, so we open up at 9 o'clock in the morning, and maybe at 11 o'clock we're full. And uh, the blue line is what is um, more or less the indication of what we think is the... And also the fire, fire uh, police brigades say it's the maximum amount of people that we can allow in. Uh, we knew there was um, more opportunity to, um, to, to allow more visitors inside, if only we could manage these crowds, because this is an image... Um, uh, this is a result of a day where there are continuously crowds standing outside of the museum trying to get in. But still we didn't manage to spread it out evenly uh, throughout the day. Um, we decided to change our uh, ticketing strategy and in spring of 2018 now every visitor has to buy uh, a starting time online. Um, so this was a huge revolution, actually, for us, and for many people who are visiting the museum as well. Uh, some people weren't that uh, happy about it, but it did lead, lead to a great result that we were allowed to have more people inside. The blue line is actually not correct. We, we don't exceed the, the amount of visitors, but it has, has made, made a, a major uh, difference. Um, so every day... Um, we have built up time slots of 15 minutes, and people, once they're inside, they can stay as long as they want. So there's always, we have to play with it a little bit, because if people decide to stay for a very long time, uh, then we would have a problem if we were already sold out in advance for 100%. So we have this, uh, we do manual uh, adjustments every 15 minutes, we add a, some more tickets, or we reduce the, the amount of tickets that are left. Um, Let's see. Yeah, for example, when the, when the sun comes out or there is a big rain shower, people will stay in longer when there is a big rain shower. So we have to be able to adjust it. Uh, the Amsterdam people probably know this picture. Uh, this is our queue in front of the museum. And this is what it looks now. It's gone. So that's uh, a nice bonus. We already said cr uh, crowdiness is also a personal thing, so it's not binary. Sometimes people, the, the one person feels it's quite a nice bus, while somebody else feels it's kind of uh, overcrowded. So we noticed that it really helps to um, manage the visitors' expectations a bit more. So what we did is that we now sent them a service email when they booked their ticket online. Now there are um, nice opportunity that, that came from the online ticket sales. Um, we have a personalized video within that uh, email, and we also changed our photography policy because that creates a lot of um, uh, bustle in front of specific pictures, and everybody's taking pictures and taking, trying to take selfies, but it just ruins the experience for most of the people. So we are, we do not allow people to take pictures anymore in front of the uh, paintings. What we also did is try to influence the experience in the gallery itself. Um, we know 
roughly everybody has a sort of um, maximized time to visit. You, there's a word for it, it's called museum fatigue. Uh, and you probably notice it yourself as well when you visit a museum. After about two hours or so, you have everything ingested that you can and you want to get out again. But what we want to do within that visit is try to spread people as best as we can throughout the whole building. But generally, people come for the um, uh, Van Gogh collection, so they go straight into the permanent collection and might skip the temporary collection. So we try to get their intention uh, as well for the temporary exhibitions we organize. One of the things we use there is the multimedia guide. This is an example from um, the exhibition um, uh, Van Gogh, Rousseau, Corot in the forest. It was held in the summer and in the permanent collection, uh, one of the last paintings there, we have the wheat filled with crows. It's a very famous picture from Van Gogh, and um, a lot of people think it's the last painting he painted, but it's not. The last painting he painted was actually hanging in the uh, temporary exhibition. It's the tree roots. So at the end of the uh, exhibition, we, of the permanent collection, we pointed them to the to uh, endure their stay in the temporary exhibition as well. And just from a little audio clip and an image, we increased the conversion with over 10% from just that one audio clip. So that's a way of trying to influence the um, uh, experience of the, the visitors. And while doing all those data analysis, we also sometimes came up with things that didn't really have to do with the capacity at all. Uh, this is an example. It's a bit difficult to see what you're looking at, but you're looking at a year of uh, multimedia guide sales data. Every tiny bar is a day, and every color is one of the 11 languages we have the multimedia guide in. So if you go full circle, you end up at the end of the year. And if you just look at these years, uh, next to each other, most of them differ very much. But there's one language that shows a very consistent pattern. So we thought, what's going on here? And it turns out that Catholics, as the Italians are, those are always Catholic days or holiday days for the Italian people that uh, turn up and have holidays around those times and, and visit the museum. So, besides knowing that, we thought it would be very nice to do something with that information as well to enhance the visitor experience. So what we do now is make sure that on these kind of days, we have as many Italian-speaking staff members uh, on service desk, uh, selling multimedia guides, um, and everywhere we can to really cater to those uh, needs um, for the Italians. So it's very simple, but very effective. Um, in the visitor experience. So let's have a quick look at um, what the results are on our uh, top line KPIs of all the things that we did in the past couple of years uh, regarding this capacity issue. Um, well, our onboarding became much more fluent with the online only policy. Uh, and we see that results uh, very clearly in the feedback that we have. The waiting time at the entrance has significantly, significantly improved, as well as the waiting time at the cloakroom and the bustle in the galleries even. It doesn't look like much of an increase on performance, but uh, we worked so hard for this and it is significant, so we were super happy about it. Um, also, we see our general satisfaction is, in general, already really good, but uh, our net promoter score in two years' time, it uh, rose uh, six points higher. And our preference, preference is a question that we really like, because it uh, says something about our competitive edge that we have to other museums. And it's very, very hard to uh, improve. And also here, uh, over a period of two, time, two years, uh, we saw an improvement of 6%. Uh, um, yeah, we've talked about this happy or not terminal before. Um, 
what we see here is, what we like to do is on a daily basis, see how many people pressed a green button, like the, right, the light green or dark green, doesn't matter. And um, in 2017, 1% of the days, we had a score of 97% who pressed the green button. And if you see what, oop, if you see what happens um, over the years, now it's 70% of the days so far this year, we have a score that's 95% or higher on the green button. And uh, the major switch that we have seen in these results are, uh, coincides uh, perfectly with uh, the um, online only, uh, ticket online only policy. Um, so I'm just super happy that with, um, with the support of the management team, the, the decision was taken to just place greater emphasis on the experience that visitors have in the museum and not so much uh, go for the highest annual figures that are even uh, possible. And this also explains the drop that we have of 5% from the, our record-breaking year to last year, and this year will be the same amount. So this is something that actually we have instigated. Um, we want this... Um, a lesser amount of people inside of the museum. Which doesn't mean that we don't strive uh, to continuously uh, make sure that we use our square meters more perfectly every day. Yeah, right, yeah, every day. <laughs> um, but growth, and this is something different, growth can also take place beyond the walls of the museum. We don't want to, uh, the, muse the museum, space to hamper our ambition to, to, to grow and to reach as many pop, uh, people as possible. And luckily, uh, throughout the whole organization, the, um, uh, the focus is on visitor experience. So also, for our digital strategy, strategy, our focus is on digital experience. There is a new website coming up, and we have a very wonderful app, which, which is called Unravel van Gogh. You, uh, Sonneke produced it. <laughs> Um, I can really advise you to have a look at it. Um, and this is also a way for us to, um, to give a Van Gogh museum experience to people that are not inside of the museum. And also uh, our global strategy, which is not the digital part, but we really go to people everywhere in the world with other exhibitions. Uh, and also something that's very new and fresh, and it's called Meet Vincent Van Gogh Experience. And there are no real artworks, but you are just completely ondergedompeld in the world of Van Gogh. Um, and this is going really well. So um, there are definitely more possibilities for us to, um, to, uh, to have more impact and uh, reach our mission. Um, yeah, I think this is a time that we are ready to uh, thank you for your attention and we can take your thoughts and questions. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much. I think it's safe to say that you're a small museum who does very impressive things. And I think it's a great example of how you can use data to really drive innovation and positive change. So I do have one question come through from the audience that we'd like mm -hmm. you to answer. They have asked, what's been the most successful solution for you to fill the quiet moments during the mornings in the museum? Uh, the, 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 um, uh, the, 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 the steepness, mm -hmm. is that a word, mm -hmm. of the, um, the, in the morning, it's, it's quite hard to get that influx even higher because you can, everybody has sort of the same way of behaving within the museum. So that is not really where we're focusing on. The, the dip itself, it was really um, the online ticket sales that solves most of that problem. And of course, there's also uh, different things. We're also trying to um, uh, work together with resellers, etc., to uh, pinpoint them more on uh, on low um, low moments. Uh, but the online sales is the biggest one. And you've obviously started using more and more technology in some of the in innovations you're driving. And I know that the Unravel Van Gogh app has won quite a few awards now. Yeah. So what do you think Vincent would make of us using so much technology nowadays to, to learn and understand his art? 
Do you have an idea? Well, I, I, I was, <laughs> I'm not in connection with Vincent. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so then I'll just answer for myself. Um, I think uh, Vincent would have loved the fact that he is inspiring people. He mm. was a very dedicated artist. He was innovative. So I think he would embrace. Uh, everything, what we're doing, and I think he would be really touched to see what happened to his legacy. Great answer, I think so too. Folks, please put your hands together again for Sonica and Lorene. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. welcome.